Hi, this is Tom with the first of my detailed videos showing you how to make a keyboard in Blender. In this episode, we'll be making the keycaps using various functions within Blender, including using the bevel tool and proportional editing. This series includes four modeling tutorials as well as two dealing with texturing. I'm going to upload a new episode each day, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. I'm going to assume that you know the basic functions of Blender, but to recap, to add an object is Shift A, to switch between Edit Mode and Object Mode is Tab, to zoom in and out is Scroll Wheel, and to orbit around your part is Middle Click and Move Your Mouse. We're going to start by making a new file, so a new general file, and at the minute it's in meters, so we're going to change that by going into the Scene tab, and then Units, and then Millimeters, because we work in millimeters. Now we're going to delete the center cube because we don't need that, and we're going to immediately add a plane. Now, down here is the settings tab, and we're going to make it 18 millimeters square, and in the center of our world. So now we just zoom in, and if you're seeing this right here, this is normal, so you go to view by pressing N, and then you change the clip start to 0.1 millimeters. So that will fix that, there we go, that's just the camera changing from meters to millimeters, that just didn't change. And then we can click off the settings panel. If you ever want to get these back, it's F9, and you can edit them. But we shouldn't be needed to do that. So now we're going to extrude this plane, 1.5 millimeters. And then again, 10.5 millimeters. This is gonna give us the basic square, sh rectangular shape we've got, we need. Now, now we're going to make the inside shape of it. So, it's, so a normal keycap, bends in, or like it tapers in. So we need to make that. The way I did it, I added a cube, and I sized it to 11.3 millimeters, or thereabouts, it doesn't really matter, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll go with that. Once again, press N, and go to item view. That, that allows you to change the dimensions of the part. Now we want to keep the, the Z at 11.3, but the X needs to be 12.5, and the Y needs to be 14.6. Now let's close the transform by pressing N and now we need to position the smaller cube inside the larger one. So to do that we'll press G and Z to scale, to move it on the, on the Z axis and we'll move it until it reaches the bottom like this. So now we need to scale it on the Y axis so press G Y and we can move it and zoom in and press shift to pan around by the way and we just want it like that and it's already in the center of our model. So that's great. Now, the way we model it is we go, we're going to drag the corners, the four vertice corners, so where the top geometry of that is. Now, but at the minute we can't see it, so we're going to turn on X-ray mode, which is up here, top right corner, and we're going to drag this vertice to the top corner. And we're gonna do that for each of the top four vertices like this. We're going to do that for each one. So yeah, as you can see, we've got a basic keycap shape. So that's the start. Now, a normal keycap has like a domed top to increase ergonomics and make it feel nicer actually. So we're going to make that now. The way I did it was using um, proportional editing, but that requires extra geometry. So we're going to add some now. So press Control R to add some edge loops, and we're going to add five in total. You can add more, but make sure it's a an odd number. We're going to go into side view mode on the Y axis, face on, and then once again we're going to go in X ray mode, so we can affect both sides of the of the model. And then we go into vertice select mode by pressing one. Select the center vertice and turn on proportional editing, which is at the top. Select sphere mode, and we can select this. Move it down. Now, as you can see, it's moving the entire top face. We don't want that. So we're going to scroll down until we reach a, a radius, which is, so you can see there, the radius has appeared, a radius which we want to affect. So I think that's about enough. That's the more you drag down for this from the center, the greater, the more domed the thing will be. 
So from here we can now turn proportional editing off and we can add some bevels because at the minute it's looking oh, oh we're, do we're done with the outside with the inside cube now we can delete that so delete there we go so now we need to add a bit of curvature because at the minute it's looking pretty square so select the four corners or four edge corners by pressing clicking and pressing shift to select multiple and then we're going to press Control b to make a bevel I'd recommend about eight segments. The more segments you've got, the greater the resolution of the curve. And if you want a chamfer, you just use one. But I'm gonna recommend about two mil, or maybe less, maybe, maybe 1.5. And then we're going to press escape to finish that. Now, we've got curves on the side, but um, we need some on the top, so we would usually press alt and right click but that doesn't work because we've used edge loops and bevels so we're going to have to compromise and go into x-ray mode again and select the top part of that but that is going to select these as well we don't want these because that will mess up our bevel so we're going to deselect them by pressing shift and right click again that'll just deselect them now we want to bevel again now this one, you don't need as many, so I'm going to do two. And you only want to do about 0.2 millimeters worth of, of bevel. So that looks good. So we've got our basic key shape. It looks pretty good. But it's not hollow, so we need to make it hollow. We can do that by first selecting all of these edges and deleting them by pressing X and then we're going to press dissolve edges. We don't need these edges anymore. They were just there when, they were just created when we did the edge loop thing. But now we're going to press three to go into face select mode, and we're going to press I to inset that face and make it about that thick. Now, we're going to go into X-ray mode again by pressing this again and extrude that face up. And then we scale in and we move to the left or to the right sorry and what that's done is it's made a inside face making it hollow so it's just made it hollow now this you could stop here but i put a lot of detail into this and i added a stem so normal keycaps have a little stem which allows them to connect to the switch so we're going to make that right now. So I'm going to hide my keycap. I will we'll name that keycap right now. Keycap. Cap. There we go. And then we can hide that for the moment. Press Control A and add a cylinder. Wow. We don't need it that big. So radius we want around 3 mil. And depth we want around 7 to 8 mil. So I'm going to put 8. We want it in the center of our world as well. The number of vertices is important, but we don't really see this, so we can get away with about 16 or less. You don't want more than that, it's just adding too much. You won't see it anyway. So now, this is going to be the stem, and we can hide that immediately, so we don't need that in a minute. What we do need is a cube. We're going to be making the cross shape in the centre, so we want it in the centre of our world and about 1.5 mil. Now we're making the cross shape so we should select four vertices like this and extrude them 1.5 mil outwards. So here we go, let's do that. And there we're done. Now this is a bit short so we're going to select these four and dissolve them again and along with these ones as well that's just give that's just removing some unwanted geometry it doesn't really add anything so there's no benefit to being there and there's no disadvantage to it going now we're going to select the outside edges like this we're going to give them a slight bevel to be a bit more realistic nothing has a sharp edge it's not entirely flat so we're going to give that a uh, point one and there we go but it's a bit short, as I said earlier, so I will select that face, 
and extrude it up around around four mil. There you go. That looks good. So we'll now get our cylinder back, and we can position the cross shape on the cylinder like this. That looks good. Now, what we've done, we've made a negative of the hole we want to make. So what we want to do, we want to imprint it into the cylinder. And to do that, we're going to use a modifier, a Boolean modifier. And to get that, you go into the modifier section and you press add, add modifier and select Boolean. It's right here. And then, so what this does, it takes an object and it applies an operation to the object you've selected. So there's a tool and an object. The tool is the cross in this case, and the object is the cylinder. So if we hide the object, the, the tool, we can see that it's cut that away from the cylinder. So that's what we want. But in, an, in a different case, we would select union, which just adds geometry, or intersect, which basically takes the geometry that intersects both of them at once. Once you understand it, it's simple enough. So we can go go ahead and apply that. Now we don't need the we don't need the cube anymore, so we can delete that by right clicking it and press delete. <coughs> and now we need to connect this to the keycap. So we'll go into side view mode and then X-ray mode, and we'll just move it up until it reaches the top there. That looks good. Maybe a bit further down. Like that. As we can see, the cylinders are a bit short, so we can extend it a bit. Like that. That looks good. Maybe a bit more. That looks perfect. Now, so we need to be, it needs to touch the keycap, so the cylinder needs to be able to touch the keycap. And to connect the two meshes we can use once again a boolean modifier so we'll go to modifiers add modifier and then select our cylinder <clears throat> and we can see that okay so in this case we want union and that that just adds geometry so that's perfect we can apply that we can delete the cylinder and we can see a problem arising so this is because we pushed the cylinder too far up. So we can just press Ctrl Z a few times so we can resolve that. So now if we look, it's not intersecting to modifier mode and boolean once again with union and the cylinder. Apply and we can delete the cylinder. That looks awesome. So we've finally modeled our keycap. There's only a few more things to do. We need to make it shade smooth so that basically shades it smooth but we can see there's a problem here there is messed up this it's, it's done something weird here that's just because there's flat edges and it doesn't really know what to do so we can fix that once again with a modifier so this is called an edge split modifier it basically allows there to be curved surfaces and flat surfaces this just shows the threshold of what angle is allowed to be flat on it so we can go and apply that so we've got our final keycap, it looks great, but you'll notice there's only one of them and we need at least 61 in my case. So to do that, we're going to be using an array modifier and that's in the modifiers tab, funnily enough, and we can press array. We need 14 on the top row, so we press 14 into the fit type and that's just put 14 in there. But as you can see, they're pretty close together and we don't want that. I'd recommend around a millimetre gap between each one. And to do that, we press, we change the relative offset, which just changes the distance between each one. Uh, that looks about right, but we want to be a bit more accurate than that. So go to Mesh and Plane. And we can make the plane whatever thickness we like. One millimetre is good. So we can then position it like this. And then we can go and edit the relative offset to be around 1.05 is good enough. That's, that's mm, maybe a bit more. But you'll have to play around to see what fits your situation. So then we can go and apply that. 
Now we need to change this final one because this is actually going to be our backspace. But at the minute, they're all one geometry. They're just one model. So we need to go into each one and separate it. And to do that, we go into X-ray mode and select each one, press P to separate and then escape. And that's now a separate model. And we need to do that for each one, which is unfortunately a downside to the using array. I, I did it before using duplicate, but that just runs into issues really quickly and it takes absolutely ages. So we're not doing it. But this is the point in the video where you may differ from where I'm going. If you want to make 104 keys, you can. But if you want to make 67 keys, you can. I'm making 61. That's just a standard 60% keyboard. And it's literally a direct copy of the keyboard I made a couple of months back. You can see that video in the cards if you want to. As you'll see from your own keyboard, hopefully, if you're using a keyboard, that there are some longer keys. But the problem, you can stretch it, but the problem is that if you stretch it, I'll show you what happens. But you'll see that the hole that you made for the stem, the stem hop, the stem, will be broken. So you're going to have to delete that, which is unfortunate, but it's just, there's no real way of doing it otherwise. So go into edge select and press delete edges. And then we'll need to see, delete these edges and select the outer edge. You can see it right here. Press Alt and right click and make it a face by pressing F. And that's just reverted it back to a normal key. We can add the this back later on. It would have actually been wiser if we kept the cylinder from earlier. So, so you can add it later. So now it's safe for us to go into x-ray mode selecting these vertices or edges and then we can drag them on the x-axis to wherever we like that looks good that looks good. for each row for each key until you finish your keycap set. Now, with the spacebar, that's a little bit different because a spacebar has a, instead of a, a downward dome, it has an upward dome. So, unfortunately, that means we're gonna have to make a new keycap. Because if you try to edit one of these keycaps, it gets a bit messy. So we can just go back, press add plane. Instead of when you select this one and you press proportional editing, you move up instead of down, like this. So it looks good. And then you follow the same steps as before. Stretch these in edit mode to be the right length and nothing you can really do about that that it doesn't show and that's the spacebar that's how you would do the spacebar or so that's it for this tutorial now you would uh, continue making each row and making each keycap the right shape and size so if you like this video or if it was informative do like and comment um, stay around for the next video, subscribe if you don't want to miss that, and if the next one's on screen, do click that. Yeah. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.